Hello and welcome to the Cabinet meeting of Thursday the 1st of uh, December. Um, if we just go through the agenda first, apologies for absence. Uh, we have apologies from Councillor Oates, uh, Councillor Clements. Any other apologies? No. Nope. Uh, item two, declarations of interest. Are there any declarations? <clears throat> no. Uh, item number three, question time. I believe there are no questions. Uh, item number four, matters referred to Cabinet in accordance with review and scrutiny procedure rules. No, no five. Okay, so. Um, just before we go into the agenda proper, I just want to make a quick, um, uh, quick statement um, regards council meeting we had on Monday. Um, there appears to be some confusion uh, in the public that this meeting was a, a vote of confidence in the member of parliament. Um, there was no uh, confidence motion tabled in the MP or a call for him to resign tabled at his council. Um, as an authority, it has no say over who is and is not the Member of Parliament, so I just wanted to clarify that for the record. Um, so, taking into the agenda proper, we have a quarter two uh, performance report. So, um, if members draw their attention to this report, it's a report of the leader, he's not here, I'll cover it for him. Um, but it details the performance uh, of the authority over a number of areas uh, and also covers uh, key projects for the authority. Um, there's also detailed um, uh, financial performance in there. So this does regularly go through scrutiny, and I believe this, is, this one's already been to scrutiny committee, um, and they've had a chance to scrutinise this. Um, I've really got nothing further to add. It's a, a statement of fact, but I'm happy to take any questions from members if there are any. Nope. Anything to add, Andy? No, Chairs. The report's a statement of fact. It tells at uh, the end of quarter two. So uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, in which case, I'll, I'll happily move the recommendation. Is there a second for that? Councillor Farrell, all those in favour? That is carried, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> item six, uh, draft base budget forecast. Um, so the authorities are uh, well underway in preparing uh, our upcoming uh, budget. Um, we are at a very early stage, um, so we're pulling together our um, proposals and our ideas for the upcoming budget, um, policy changes we would like to implement and uh, policy changes as the result of external factors. Um, uh, there's a lot of uh, assumptions and uncertainties at the moment to plug into this including uh, external income, uh, support from the government uh, and you know other factors um, but this is the first step in producing a formal, bullet, a formal budget but at this stage it is um, very very rough and in very very early stages. I uh, don't know if anybody wants to add anything on, on that. Thank you, Chair. Just just to add that uh, we've been through the the detail of the proposals in there with uh, councillors on a couple of occasions now. We had a workshop uh, a few weeks ago and also last night we went through it in the, the leaders' budget workshop in, in some detail. So all councillors have been involved or had the opportunity to be involved and informed uh, to date. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments from Cabinet members? No, no. Um, I'll happily move the recommendations or five recommendations in total. Is there a second for that? Councillor Doyle, so all those in favour? Thank you, that is carried. Uh, item seven, Treasury Management Strategy Statement and Annual Investment Strategy Mid-Year Report 22-23. Thank you. Thank you. So the purpose of the report is to present to members the mid-year review of the Treasury Management Strategy Statement and Annual Investment Strategy. The recommendations are that the Council be requested to approve the Treasury Management Strategy Statement and Annual Investment Strategy Mid-Year Review Report 2022-23. I won't go through all of the report because hopefully everybody's read it and it is a statement of fact. Thank you and happy to move. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Anything you want to add, Steph? No, nope. I say it's, it's, it's a statement of fact. I'm happy to second the recommendation. All those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, item 8, Local Council Tax Reduction Scheme. Councillor Bailey? Yeah, as members will be aware, a review of the current Council Tax Reduction Scheme was planned during 2020 with the aim to finalise a new scheme for 
consultation that autumn. However, in light of the impact of the pandemic on the scheme, the review was postponed. It is now suggested that the review be postponed until 2023, when the situation will be clearer. As such, no changes to the current scheme are recommended. This approach was considered and approved by corporate scrutiny on the 25th of August 2020 and Cabinet on the 20th, sorry, on the 10th of September 2020 and Council on the 15th of December 2020. There are two recommendations to approve. One, that Council consider and endorse or otherwise the proposed recommended changes detailed below. That the planned review for the introduction of funding scheme for Council tax reduction be deferred until 2024 and that the current scheme for working age customers continues to be aligned to applicable amounts with those of housing, housing benefit of 2023-24. And again, there's, there's no change to it, so happy to move. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Anything to add on that? I assume we're, uh, we're not the only authority who's choosing to, to hold off for another year on this review. Yeah, that's correct. A, a lot of councils have been looking at this over the past few years. But because of the impact of the pandemic well, and the cost pressure crisis at the moment, then a lot of councils have deferred it. Um, as as uh, Councillor Bailey has pointed out, we will be looking at that during next year. But in any event, um, we'd have to consult before uh, implementing any changes to the scheme. So it's too late for next financial year anyway. But what we'll do, we'll, we'll do that review next year, uh, involve the, the Corporate Scrutiny Committee in that review as well, and then bring the proposals uh, through corporate scrutiny to cabinet later on in the year. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to second those recommendations. So uh, if there are no other questions, all those in favour? Thank you. Uh, item nine, uh, intend HR and payroll system. Again, Councillor Bailey. Thank you. So the purpose of the report is to request that members approve the following for the move of the Council's HR and pay payroll system, iTrent, to cloud-hosted software as a service provided by MHR. The repurposing of existing capital scheme for time recording system of £15,000 is no longer required to part fund the move of IT rent to MHR hosted SAAS. Allocation of 20000 from the DL UHC Cyber Grant to part fund the move of iTrent to MRH hosted. The addition of a new scheme to the capital programme iTrent HR and payroll SAAS with a total capital budget of 46,000 funded by the two elements and an 11,000 contribution from the existing ICT capital budget. So the recommendation is it is recommended that members approve the financial aspects detailed above has gone through, as well as the waiver to the procurement provision of financial guidance for the direct award of a new five-year contract with MHR for provision of the iTrent HR and payroll system on an MHR cloud-hosted software as a service base. Thank you. Any questions or comments from Cabinet members? Officers want to, want to add anything to that? Yeah, just to support what Councillor Bayes just said, um, this supports our IT strategy uh, with the use of more cloud services, particularly software as a service, because that gives, that takes all the responsibility away from uh, the IT team in terms of maintaining the servers, upgrading the application, so sort of maintenance tasks really, and allowing them to focus on more value add type activities like progressing the digital transformation and the strategy. Uh, it's financially the right thing to do um, over the five year period. Uh, it's actually cheaper to move it to, uh, to MHR hosted. Um, and there's other softer benefits like the business continuity. It's, it's, it's way beyond our capabilities, what they can provide. Uh, obviously, key, it's a key application providing payroll and HR um, functions. So all around, I think it's, it's the right thing to do. Thank you. Uh, did you move the recommendations, Councillor Bailey? If I didn't, I'm moving it. <laughs> is there a seconder? Councillor Doyle, all those in favour? That is carried, thank you. Uh, item 10, purchase of digital solution to support the implementation of the Elections Act. Uh, report to the returning officer, Andy. Thank you, Chair. Um, just put my different hat on for this. Um, purpose of the report is, is twofold. Um, first is to um, endorse me signing as, as returning officer the necessary agreements for the implementation of the new legislation under the Elections Act 2022. Those are predominantly data protection, data sharing and cyber security. Um, 
it's it's really a formality um, that we have to do that, but we have to do that to participate in the uh, in, in the Elections Act. The second part is to approve us entering into a four-year agreement uh, for the modern democracy system. Um, it's a digital polling station solution. It's got significant benefits um, within for the, the smooth running of the election, particularly faced with the changes and challenges that the new election act is, is going to, uh, to bring in. Um, there's a lot of benefits written in the report. Um, having seen the system, um, I obviously fully endorse its, its use. I think it's, um, it's, it's a step change in, in how um, technology is used to, to de deliver elections. Um, from a uh, political element, it means that the, 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 the verification and count process or the, the turnout will be seen much, much quicker rather than having to wait for all the ballot boxes to come back in as soon as the polls closed and the, um, the presiding officer in the station, that data is, is live there and then. So it's got significantly benefits um, around um, staffing levels, resilience, um, and even things like when, you, when preparing for, for polls, printing off registers, actually they're all electronic, they're contained on an iPad system that is updated live as the register is updated. So there are significant benefits um, to the system and significant business continuity um, uh, resilience that it brings in. I'd probably just like to ask Bernie if she's got any sort of any comments because I know you've lived and breathed this for a while. Yeah, I think with the challenges that the Elections Act is bringing towards us, the, the processes within the polling station will be much more complex. This system gives us the ability to simplify that, so it will look far more professional when our electors come in. Our staff will be able to manage it without any issues. They don't need to worry about what they will be doing next because that system is going to walk them through it. It is by far um, the best solution that I can find for the issues that we will be facing in order to implement the changes next year. Thank you. Any questions from cabinet members on this one? No. Nope. Um, yes, I, certainly uh, I know we've got your challenges with the new uh, rules and regulations coming in around elections, so I'm, I'm happy to move the recommendations. Um, is there a seconder for that? Councillor Bailey? All those in favour? That is carried. Thank you. So we move uh, item 11. So. Um, I move that in accordance with provisions of the local authorities' executive arrangements, meetings and access to information, England Regulations 2012, and Section 104, sorry, Section 100A slash 4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the press and public be excluded from the meeting during consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves a likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3, part 1, sorry, 3, <laughs> <laughs> Paragraph 3, Part 1 of Schedule 12A of the Act, and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public. Uh, I'll so move. Councillor Farrell seconds. Uh, all those in favour? Thank you. If we could uh, turn off the cameras and ask the public to leave.